In this short video, we will talk about how to use Horner's method to create Taylor polynomials. If you are familiar with Taylor polynomials, then you will recognize this formula. And if you are familiar with Horner's method, which you should be by now, you will recognize this part. So this is the ith derivative of f at the value p divided by i factorial. That is exactly what we get at the end of each line if we do Horner scheme. So let's look and see how that works. So if we have this function here, and we do Horner scheme, right, if we write down our coefficients, etc., and we pick a point, let's uh, say pick an x value of, we'll just call it p again, right, and we evaluate that, then we end up here with, at the end of the first line of Horner, f of p, the next line f prime of p, and now f double prime of p divided by 2 factorial, right, because you remember we had to multiply that by 2 factorial in order to get the second derivative of f evaluated at p, right? So, if we continue that process, we also have the nth derivative of f evaluated at p divided by n factorial, right? So these are exactly the values that we will need to plug in to form our Taylor polynomial. So let's do an example. Let's say we have this function here. We write out our coefficients. Let's say we want to evaluate that at 2. So we carry, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. So we already have f of 2 is equal to 17. We continue. 3, 6, 10, we multiply 20, 29, and that is f prime of 2. And then we do a few more levels. 3, 6, 16. That's f double prime of 2 divided by 2 factorial, right? Don't forget that part. And one last level. 3, we have a uh, 3 here. And that is f triple prime of 2 divided by 3 factorial. And like I said, these are the exact values that we need in order to create our Taylor polynomial. So let's write those out. 17, 29, 16, and 3. So I'll write that here. 17, 29, 16, and 3. So as we saw above, once we've written in these, the only thing we need to do is just multiply by x minus p to the ith power. So let's do that. So we have here 17 times x minus p was 2, right? To the 0th power. Of course we can leave that out. So the 0th power just gives us a 1 anyway. Plus 29 times x minus 2 uh, to the first power, right? But of course we can leave that off plus 16 times x minus 2 squared plus 3 times x minus 2 to the third power. So that is 3, right? Yeah, we had our degree 3 here. So that is our third order Taylor polynomial of f at x equals 2. And just like that, we're finished. So Horner's method works perfectly for Taylor polynomials since what you need is what you get at the end of each line. No multiplication involved. So yet another usage of Horner's method.